you know, eventually got the chance to walk on at the University of Missouri for all my Mizzou fans out there, M-I-Z. I don't know how many, you know, Missouri listeners you got on there, but um, you had the chance to walk on and, and, you know, like many people, when you're kind of, you feel like you're in the zone, you feel like you're in the sweet spot in life, you're, you are, um, things are going great. You know, that's kind of where I was my freshman and sophomore year and life was good. And I felt like, you know, I was right where God had me. Um, he had, you know, I thought he had blessed me with all these talents and abilities to play football. And it's what I enjoyed doing. I had Bible study on the team, did all these cool things that I'm just like, wow, this is so amazing. And uh, going into my junior season, you have this, this meeting with your coach. It's just a really standard, pretty chill meeting. And I walk into this meeting room and usually there was only one coach, uh, but this time there was three. So that was different. And I, I walk in and I sit down and one of the assistant coaches, uh, he gets up and he closes the door behind him. And I'm thinking that is not a good start to this meeting, whatever is about to go down. And, uh, and so we're, I'm sitting there like my mind's kind of spinning what, what's about to happen. And, and one of the coaches, the recruiting coordinator, he says, Alex, I want to shoot you straight. We have over scholarship at quarterback. We're bringing in a kid to take your spot. And so essentially what he's telling me in that moment is like, you are not good enough. Like you do not measure up. And that's how I took it because football was everything for me. That was who I was. That's Alex, the quarterback, Alex, the football player. That's like, if I had a bad practice, man, my best rest of my day was ruined. And so he's telling me this and he says, Alex, you have two options. Option number one is you're cut. Like you're done. That's it. Or option number two, you can stay on the team as this volunteer assistant coach doing all these small tasks. And he's like, by the way, you need to decide right now in this meeting what you want to do. Wow. And yeah, yeah, exactly. You're shaking your head. It's so true. It's like it was like a business transaction. It was kind of like, all right, man, what, what do you want to do? And my mind's racing at this point. I'm thinking all my good friends are on the team. I've given two and a half years of my life to this blood, sweat and tears. And like, this is what it comes down to. You know, as, as a person of faith, I'm thinking, you know, God, if I could have scripted this story a million other ways, I would have done it. Not this way. Like, this is not what I had in mind. And, um, but I felt called in that moment to, to just stay on as an assistant coach, whatever that even meant. And I remember, you know, I didn't want to show any emotion to these football coaches, but I remember getting out of that, that room and, and I actually had to walk past the, the person who was taking my spot. And I, mm. you know, he had a smile on his face. Uh, I knew, I kind of, I knew who he was. And so that was tough. And I remember going out to my truck and I were parking my truck. And I remember just, just crying and just kind of letting loose and, and really just feeling so humiliated that, you know, I, I was this kid from a small town. I had these big dreams and like, this is how it ends for me. And so that was on a Friday. And the first practice was that Monday where I was going to start being this assistant coach. And over the weekend, I had all the thoughts of like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, God, why would you allow that? Why me? Like, why, why me? And I was feeling sorry for myself. I was mad. I was angry. Like all the emotions that you, that you do. And that first Monday was the, pre- uh, that next Monday was the practice. And, you know, I'm like, you know what, I got to make a positive out of this. So I, sh- I, I show up to the practice and I'm thinking, you know what, I've been part of this program for a few years. So maybe they're going to give me like this big coaching role. Like maybe I'm going to have this huge responsibilities they're going to give me. I'm going to be up in the press box calling plays and all this stuff. Like that's what I'm thinking as a junior in college. Right. I was very wrong. Uh, So I walk in and the first day and one of the assistant coaches, he was like, Alex, you know, come here. I want to show you what your job's going to be. And I'm like, sweet, man, you know, give me that freak swag, that freak gear. Well, I walk in and he literally hands me this yellow flag, like what a referee would throw. He hands me this flag and he says, Alex, what I want you to do is when someone jumps off sides in practice, we need you to take this flag and throw it down. And, and the worst part is he demonstrated how to do it twice. Like he, he walked over, picked it up. He's like, and then you throw it down. I'm like, okay, I, I think I can manage that. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't say that cause I didn't want to be sarcastic, but in my mind, I'm like, what is happening right now? And I'm like, so how long do you want me to, the, what part of practice? And he's like, well, it's not a part of practice. Like we need you to do this role the entire season. And it was like, pff, like mind blown at that moment. Like, are you kidding me? Long story short, that entire junior season, I was throwing the flag during practice. I was making coffee for the coaches. I was doing all these small, mundane, menial tasks that I was like, what am I doing? Like, literally, literally, what am I doing here? I should not be here. Um, And to the best of my ability, I tried to serve and just show up and be there for guys on the team. And for the first time in my life, I was kind of just slowed down. And I had to be like, God, like, what am I doing here? 
And some cool things started to happen that junior season, you know, guys on the team that I never would have probably even connected with because I was so busy. I'm still friends with to the, to this day, guys who are in the NFL on playing on Sundays today who just said little things to me during that time. Like, Hey man, I see you like, you know, keep it up. I, I would have been out of here and transferred, but man, thanks for, thanks for sticking with it. It was like, it was those little things that got me through. And just to wrap up the story here, uh, my senior year was coming around the corner. I knew I wanted to try to get back on the team as a quarterback, you know, and um, long story short, um, I got back on the team as a quarterback. I'd continue to work out, you know, during practice and all the stuff while I was still an assistant coach. We go to the Citrus Bowl. It was an awesome experience. But Justin, the reason I, I start with this story is that for anyone listening, I think for the first time in my life, I had to realize that leadership requires no title. You know, and doing, showing up and being excellent. And I didn't do it perfectly, but just trying to add value every single day, day in and day out. Like, man, I didn't need, even though I felt like I was stripped of any title, I learned, you know what? It's not about that. I don't care. We always hear the, the, the kind of the thing of, you know, it's not, it's not about if you're the CEO or the janitor, right? And I, I kind of felt like a janitor. I was like, what, what am I even doing here? You know, but man, just to see the impact in that way. And so I just want to encourage your listeners um, as I am preaching to myself, it's like, you never know the trials that you go through, how you can be used in those situations. And I truly believe to answer your question in a full circle way, I wouldn't have gotten into speaking and writing books and doing all these things. I don't even know if I'd be on this podcast with you right now, if it wasn't for me being humiliated in that way and, and coming through all of that. And so sorry, that was a long winded answer, but I really feel like it is impactful for your listeners to hear that they're going to experience trials. We all will. And then the question is, man, how, how are we used in those ways that so that they don't uh, define us, but they refine us in that way? That's so good. No, that's such a powerful story too. 